Hi there, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Stain Box. I'm Dean, and over there is Raymond. That side, I always do that wrong every episode. I'll point in the wrong direction. Hello, Kimura Hashif. You and your Gaelic. Every episode, you're one of these weeks are going to start with it talking Gaelic. Tu quieres hablar español? No. I can't sing that. I was going to sing the Bowling for Suit song. Yes, but see. I'm not get it yeah. <laughs> you would have been correct. So, well, talking about Bowling for Suit, uh, so this episode we talk about music because we're basically really into music, as you can tell by just looking at appearances, looking at the way I dress, looking at the way Raymond dresses, the fact that he's got another guitar sitting behind him. We're quite clear into. No. You know, they've been there every episode. Uh, uh, so, and you never fucking tell me. Anyway, we'll, we'll break I in. You, I, as, I, as I was saying, we're, we're both heavily influenced in, interested in music. Uh, we had actually mentioned it on one of the first episodes. One of the big builders in our friendship was the fact that we played guitar. Uh, so... Mm-hmm. I think we we can made the had the idea of like, talking about who got us into music and what kind of stuff we listened to growing up and stuff like that. With me, it was my stepdad actually suggested to me about guitar. My granny bought me one for it was either Christmas or birthday when I was about five, and my mom and my stepdad got together when I was seven or eight. And my stepdad he played guitar growing up, and he suggested one day why you not learn how to use it. Why you not learn how to do what you see the guys doing on the telly when I'm watching my concerts? And it kind of get picked up for there. Uh, what about you, Dean? What was your kind of first influence? First person to get you into music? Uh, no, me, I've not played music. My, my household is not really. My dad played uh, Miss Holden, uh, the, the Missy, as we've got. Harmonica. Uh, that's all I mean for it. Uh, so I died that grown up, but my dad, my dad was my, my biggest influence in music in general. My dad, my dad's my biggest influence in just about everything in my life, basically. Uh, it'd be it music, film, lifestyle, way I dress. My dad basically was influence, still is influence in just about everything. Uh, he grew me up making me listen to a lot of rock, a lot of blues. Guns N' Roses, uh, we was one of the biggest bands we uh, grew up listening to, and what listening to Slash, so I always, always wanted to be Slash. So I, by primary seven, I decided I wanted a guitar, and my grand got my guitar, and then when I got into first year, that's when I got getting the, the guitar lessons from Mr. Hughes at the end of first year, and that's when I got more into playing guitar. But yeah, it was mostly, mostly my dad fought for for actual initial influence in music, and playing music technically would be my dad, but I would say no, no, there was no full musical influence in my, my household. My sister played a bit of music as a teenager, but it was more like brass band stuff. So, mm-hmm. but she, she, to be fair, I say the, the metal I listen to, like uh, the reason I love new metal is because one was Bangs a teenager listening to Limp Biscuit when I was eight year old, and I went. I love what I hear there. Can I get a CD? And uh, I still have. I don't have that, obviously, but I've still got a bunch of uh, copies my sister gave me that she had, uh, that she had copies for her CDs. That I've got, like, just random new metal stuff on it. And the still test is music I listen to. Half the stuff in my collection is new metal. Cause See, just when you're saying that, there's still stuff that you listen to, mate. That, see the meme that's going about on Facebook? That there's all this new music coming out that you could listen to, but I would rather sit and listen to the same half dozen albums. That just Aye. reminds me of you every time. In fairness, it reminds me of myself, to be fair, because I'll go I'll automatically, if I'm putting music on, if I can't think of anything to go on, I'll go straight to a playlist on YouTube that's got about six albums in it. But in fairness, at times there's at times I'll go down a YouTube rabbit hole and I end up finding some weird and wonderful shit. Like right. we're to do a YouTube 
reaction video a few weeks back that it didn't work out. We will try and fix it for future reference. When we we'll find that band, when we find that shit hot band that we're going to advertise again in another episode. But I, uh, I can't remember the name. Then creep left. Creep, creep left. left. Yes. Uh, I was going to listen to them. To be fair, I first only listened to that one song. So we could do another reaction uh, at one point and listen to a different song. Because mm-hmm. I still haven't listened to them. It's the only song I've listened to them so far. So we still have a chance to listen to them. There was only really the one that, that I had listened to as we were in that Madonna cover. But the Madonna cover is just too good. Everybody loves a bit of Madonna here in Ayrshire. Thanks, Grado. Found <laughs> <laughs> my dad out that a couple days ago. The fact that there's a wrestler. Yeah, but but Grado, he, he, he loves he loves Drew McIntyre and he talks about Drew McIntyre all the time. And I know that we're going kind of, kind of with with music can talk about wrestling again. My dad loves Drew McIntyre for some reason because he's Scottish, because he's for air, air. And I was like, are you aware that that Grado guy you keep telling me about? She's on your TV show. You watch what that he watches that three doors down. I'm like, are you aware he's for he's for Stevenson? He's like, what? He's for the top end of Stevenson. That's what he's built. Oh, well, I like that guy even more now then. I don't think Kenny was that close to him. <laughs> Mate, that, that's, uh, I actually just heard your dad saying that. I didn't hear you saying that. It was your dad saying it. But see, just, 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 right, right, about, like. uh, just as you were saying about the... It wasn't just necessarily your dad or your sister that got you into music. It was kind of the same with me as well, because my stepdad, it was all, it was all rock music. Uh, so I People, people, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil it now. People don't, I know Clark, I know his stepdad, and his stepdad is a massive, massive, massive Beatles fan. I mean, you can do these people's houses I mean, I was, I was, nine times out of ten. Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. Now, now, when you go into people's houses, you walk in the house, and in the hallway, nine times out of ten, it is pictures of family on the walls. No, 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 not in Raymond's house. It was Beatles. In the mm-hmm. hallway, there was three pictures in this hallway, or four. I think it was just three, and every mm-hmm. one of them was the Beatles. That's how big a fan Clark was of the Beatles. He had them, and said if family members, they picked up the Raymond, it was John, Paul, George, George and Ringo. Paul, uh, what's his name? John, Paul, Ronald. George, and Ringo. Ringo, Ringo. that. Mate, I, I, was, I was actually just about to get to that. So was my next my next comment was going to be surprisingly enough you would never guess this for the appearance but I know quite a lot about the Beatles but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily just the Beatles yes um he's no lying at all that uh, there was three different pictures and all three one of them was the Beatles standing on stage with the drums and the guitar and the other two were portraits of four members at different points in their life. And the thing that made it even funnier was if anybody can remember my stepdad for back then, he had the moustache and, <laughs> and the white glasses, the fucking rim rimp glasses. He, he actually fucking looked like John Lennon in one of these fucking drawings. Right, all right, all right. Uh, 100%, that's what he was going for. That was the look he was going as, for. As I, was, as I was just about to point out as well, it wasn't just... The, the Beatles Ray Clark there it was like he got me into Free he got me into Led Zeppelin he got me into Black Sabbath he got me into Cream Jimi Hendrix there was a quite a wide variety of stuff that Clark got me into and it's quite funny if you do the collection videos Clark he's got a fucking CD collection that could uh, could fucking rip the whole of HMV mm-hmm. So oh, I got, 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 got a big record. Collection. I remember, I remember seeing it as a kid. Even well, when I was a teenager, he still had a big collection. Then mm-hmm. he's probably bought more as he's retired. Obviously, uh, since retiring, he has got in his bedroom. There's a whole wall. See, like your wall behind you. Mm-hmm. One of the room walls, if you could remember, the the, uh, the wall that the couch was on in my room. Uh, that is new been turned it's all shelves and the CD and DVD collection is all up there and it has got the built in telly shelf it has got the CD player that used to be in the living room uh, there's been a lot of upgrades and stuff done and he's got a fucking collection in the room that could put yours to shame probably 
but his is all VHS and it's all music tapes. It's no like all Blu-rays like yours is. Mm-hmm. Like yours, yours I, is all specific media, whereas his is a, music. a, a wide wide array of medias, but it's all music related stuff. Like no, he, uh, as you had says, he's got every fucking Beatles thing known to man. Even when it came to Christmas, I, I would look for something Beatles related. See nowadays, I don't want to do that in case I buy the fucking same thing twice. I can you get any of it? Because it's a Beatles. It's like me and my dad. I don't buy them Led Zeppelin because that's my dad's favorite band. I don't buy my dad anything Led Zeppelin related because again, he will have it because it's Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Or, he'll, or, or 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 like what I did me when I bought them Celebration Day, uh, the the live concert they did when they come back uh, London, like the what the fifty year anniversary or something like that. They broke John Bonham's son back on the stage with them. I bought them that. Because it's was, was about... with the flu that day as well. Uh, I, I, think I, I think I remember getting dealt that. It was, it was a London gig, wasn't it? Aye. Bonham's boy was meant to be really ill with a bad flu that day and he still went out and played a fucking blinder. I don't think he did not. I not think he the flu, but he still, played, he still played very well, played very respectful for his dad. But my dad wanted to go to this concert. He talked about going to this concert for... I think I announced my dad wanted to go to this concert. He'd never seen Les Eppelin. It was the one band he'd never seen the one band. They always wanted to see. So when the concert, the when it came out in DVD, CD, I bought it for him. So excited for it to get it to him. So excited to see his face. I gave it to him and I listened to it and he was like, terrible, terrible gig. When I bought it, shouldn't have bought that. Waste of money. He's listened to it once. He's never listened to it since. It's wasting money I've ever spent. I'd never buy my dad, I'd never buy my dad's music. See, it's one of the things, man, you can always, you can always say that he's got it now. Like, it's can his collection. It's his opponent. collection. It could, it could be one of the things that, fucking, a few years down the line, he just, he's bored one day and goes, Ken, what, fuck it, I'll give that an after eye. That's, that's when he realises that, no, it's actually all right. Might be one of the kind of things that's taken listen with. Get it. Sorry, maybe funnily funnily enough, you mentioned Led Zeppelin, man. It was a Led Zeppelin tribute band. It was my first gig. Jesus. So, uh, uh, trying to think what my first gig would be then. Th- that was another one. It was my stepdad. When I, I remember him telling that story. So I did really quite well. He was going into his work that, see, the week leading up to this gig. Every single day, it's like, oh, only four more days to take the boy to his first gig. Only say many more days to take the boys to, boy to his first gig. And the, the lads at his work are going, oh, so who are you taking up to see? Are you taking up to see, like, Westlife or fucking Steps or something? And my father's like, nah, 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 nah. Boys get good taste, man. So, like, oh, so who are you taking up to see? Going to take them to Irvin Magnum to see a Led Zeppelin tribute band. It's like, wait, your boy's into Led Zeppelin? What age is he again? I, th- I was still at primary school at that point, I think. So I was. Yeah, my, my first gig with him still being. I think my first gig with him was I think my first gig with him was I don't think I ever went to like any of the type of tribute band gigs. I can't know that I can think of. I think it was like I only went to Stone's Hour was the first like I went to, but it was always a big gig. No couldn't, no couldn't in the, the, the rugby club gigs. They don't care. Ah, so <laughs> gigs are different. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to play it that way, technically one of the first gigs I went to would have been a skill production of something. Right. When I was such and such an age. But, like, the, the first proper big gig I went to was Bowling for Soup when I was 14 or 15. I was telling somebody, I was telling somebody after about seven. So, two days ago, I was talking about you. Two or three days ago, I was talking to you at my work. Bowling for soup came on at my work. And uh, that's what I say. I, I actually went, every time I hear Bowling for soup, no matter what, I think of you. Every wait, single wait, wait, time wait, wait, I hear for Bowling for soup, no matter what song that comes on, it can be, right now, for some reason, it's always 1985 that gets played at my work. That's the one and only song that's played at my work. That's super Alex, I play it all the time. But it could be any song. No matter what song I think of you, like one, because you're the bat, you you got me into Bowling for Soup, and two, you've seen Bowling for Soup that many faking times 
every time they came to Britain, you went and seen them, and that was twice a year usually. You, you and Aidan went and seen Bone for Soup. I'm going to correct your facts there. I only seen Bone for Soup twice. Really? Yes. You see it? It was, it was only twice. I seen them in 2007 and I seen them in 2009. They were back to back tours. I thought, you'd the, seen them. I thought you'd seen them. I thought you seen more than that. Uh, I might have seen. You got that signed CD and stuff. Zebrahead played with them the twice I've seen them. You got a signed CD for one of the bands. MC mm-hmm. Lars played one year as well. We've seen MC Lars mm-hmm. one year. Look at me telling you what gigs you went to. I wasn't hey, I'm, any no, gigs. No, I'm, I'm just confirming this way because you said I had seen them as many times. I've seen Gleed for Within many times and I've seen Bowling for Soup. No, no, no. If you say you've seen them three times, that means that'd be cool. No, it's equal it's equal to every, well, do, you, do, we, do, do we couldn't eat Gen V? Uh, it was technically a, a release gig, but it was like four songs. Uh, was I lost it. Gig, I it lost my a, voice at it. Uh, mate, don't get me wrong. It was a fucking cracking. It was a cracking day. Like it, yeah, as much as it, as much as it was stunning in HMV, listening to a band playing a couple of their new songs, it was still it, it was enjoyable. It was it, the fact that they were. Playing, but we'll 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 talk we'll talk we'll, we'll stop talking about this because we'll give you spoiler. This will be a next episode or a couple of episodes time. We will talk about. I So this uh, is going to be you... next, the next episode. So let's just talk about music. Uh, so <laughs> Craig play music. We end up going to Mr. Hughes and uh, Raymond played guitar. I play guitar. I always wanted to be a guitarist. It's my biggest thing. I wanted to be Slash. No matter what, I wanted to be Slash. And uh, the guitar the guitar teacher, Mr. Hughes, he was a bassist. That was his, that was his thing, he was a bassist. And he told me I was learning how to play bass for uh, the fourth year at the exam, music exam. I was learning how to play bass. And he told me, Dean, you should be quite a good bassist. You should just pick up bass. You should drop the guitar and be a bassist. You're more an article bassist. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that idea because... <laughs> Uh, Ma, I had the, the dream of being the next Slash, the next day. At that point, I discovered Dime Bag Darrow and Machine Head, and I wanted to be the next big deal. I wanted to be the next big guitarist. Basses, who talks about bass? They died. They Dale talks about basses. I talk about basses because, weirdly enough, I love basses. Bass is probably one of my favourite instruments now. But. <laughs> The thing that makes it even funnier is, right, Mr. Hughes suggested this. I think this, story you're going to tell you. He's, he's going on and on about it, right? And he's trying his damnedest not to laugh now. He's hiding behind the camera and hiding behind his bottle of juice now. And, well, <laughs> the, the simple caption for this is, Dean, I'm not a bass player. Because oh, we, Mr. Hughes had suggested to him, like, you have got the rhythm there, but your hands, your fingers are too chunky for a step. Your hands are fucking a lot chunkier than mine. No, I've got big fat fingers. One of the pains in shit because I've got these big daft windies in the middle of my hands, so you can tell that there's something hidden in my hand. Uh, but yours are the total opposite. It's like fucking sausages. Shuffle. Shuffle. <laughs> but Mister Hughes tried to point out that. You would fare better with uh, the thicker gauge strings. There's only four of them. They're wider up here, so it gives you how to move. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just that I fair dues. I was ripping into you, mainly because of the reaction that you were giving me. Like, if, if because you to... because it was just I didn't know. It was just that 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 idea. And you knew how much I love. I wanted to be a guitarist. I love guitar. You knew how much guitar meant to me. I didn't want to be a bassist. To me, a bassist was like... To you, a, a, bassist was a, to you a bassist was a failed guitar player? Aye. Like, why, 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 why you play guitar? Why you play bass if you can't play guitar? Like, that, that's all a bassist was. A bassist is something you can't play guitar. It's pure and simple. And we walked in for school one day and we were, we were in there for... 
pieces here are pieces here are pieces. And that's what I'm really going to go. I'm no pieces. But I'd say it at the same time is kicking my foot against. So the, I bet people know, people might not remember these type of fences because they don't really about it anywhere. It's mainly like wooden fences made nowadays. It was old, the old metal, no, uh, wa- metal frames and the wire, like crisscross. But it was just the, the black f- and like a tiny, like the crisscrosses have been snapped off. So it's just like we bit say it through the post. But I didn't see the wee bits through the post. I thought it was just a post. And I kicked the post. And for some reason, for some reason, I say that's my taste. I kicked the post at that. For anybody that's a bit more clued up in martial arts, it, it, what he done was he front kicked this post with the bottom of his foot rather than using the topies. Instead of Bobby Sane, instead of Bobby Sane, I kicked it with an axe <laughs> because. Probably because I didn't want to die for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in I hindsight, in hindsight, I broke my foot. In hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. In hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. I only, I, I, as I say, as I say, it's probably because I didn't want to die for so many years. That's how I came out of the kick. So I probably Aye. kicked the fence. Oh, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. At that point, I was wearing like pistols. No, no, so it was a Muay Thai kick I used, so that, but at that point I was using my, my thumbsoles, like uh, my ear walk stuff on. So the, the sole name on the too thick, and I didn't see the wire. And the wire that line. Bang! I still feel ah, it. I see that. Talking about it, I can still feel it. I left Raymond in the bottom of my street and, and, and hobbled <laughs> up my cow to that. Go in my house, and they, I, I so happen to be wearing my white flimsels as well. So I, I, I tear the white flimsel off, and inside's all red. And I tear my black sock off, and there's the fucking blood just pouring out my, my foot. Oh, sat there, sat there for a good, a good half hour with some toilet roll. Got in the bathroom, just soaking it against my foot. Toilet roll, banging it, toilet, me a toilet roll against my foot, clotting it until it clotted. And as I say, I can still feel it. Uh, when we talk about it, I can still feel the, the, the pain. It's, it was like start, it was like standing on a nail. That, that was the feeling. That, that, it was that sore. I could have stood on a nail before as well, but that, it, bled more, it bled more than standing on a nail because it was more, probably because it was more pointed than probably why they snapped it. But I was that passionate over not being a bassist that I chose to take, you know, take my foot off. <laughs> Aye, you would you would re- rather be gimped for a couple of days than be caught a at that moment. But now looking right. back on it, fucking fifteen years later, you're thinking, "Nah, can you wish no. I take up bass?" Because I actually like I like bass players. I like fucking everyone. Actually, mean that about fucking bass players being failed guitarists. Like I'll no, come around not and because a guitar player. it's two totally different styles all together. So there is. I've seen guitar players that can't touch, can't fucking handle a bass. I, I, as, as I've grew older, as I've said, I've grown my respect for bass. I love bass. Bass is you, my favorite. You instrument. understand it, man, man. You understand the music, man. I've, I had an argument with a guy who disagreed with me. I said that bass is the most important instrument in our band. Some days, some they, they said no, it's the drums because the drums keep the beat. But I think it's the bass because the bass gives the drums, their metadrone. I think the bass keys, the drums, the beat. The bass is a dum, 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 dum. It's got the, which mm-hmm. is giving the drummer what they need to play. So in my, in my eyes, it's the basis. You need the basis. But so the guy, this guy is like, he's seen a band, which is a bass, it's not another basis, it's not a drummer. But if you think about, but all, all, if you think about all through everything, Choirs, nobody choirs, eh? orchestras and stuff like that. There's no drums. Right. But what is it? It's a double bass. Double bass, if, if there is drums, it's usually tuned ones. It's not actually <laughs> a, a rhythm it's section. It's not, it's not a kit. Uh, uh, but uh, it's band, that's it. I understand where you're coming, you're coming from. See, because like, I'd done music a bit further into school than you did, I would argue that they're both as important as each other. 
the, so, I, obviously if they, one helps each other, obviously the drums helps the bass keep keep timing and the bass keeps everything. That they obviously, but and that argument also the singer's the key and the guitar is the key. Everybody in a band, if, they, if you're in a band, the band's the key the key member. But the most key member of a band is the fifth member, the member that you don't see. The fifth unofficial member, the member that kends his shit, but maybe does they have the talent? And I'm talking about that fucker there. I'm up on the right. Night. on your screen. No, <laughs> well, on my screen, I don't know. Because every, every, week I, every week I point at you, the right way, but in the edit, it's wrong, so I, I still don't care. So whatever yeah. screen, whatever way we are, you might be even totally in the air, like folks. Totally random moment, but I need to double out the sound of this fucking acoustic guitar behind me because I can hear it fucking reverb in my log. The most important member of a band isn't any bass player or drummer. They're all as important as each other, but the most important one is the unofficial fifth member. The one that kinds of shit I'm talking about the cunt at whatever side he's on. I'm pointing at both of them. Point at the right one. <laughs> Dean, when we were growing up, and I'm sure that Dean would probably go to find a fucking a wee clip to go in here, eh, the very band that we're talking about. But That we're talking about, but when I played in Faith and Misery, there was quite a few different members. We had like, quite a high turnover of members due to various different reasons. But Dean... and and the fact is, were a, a teenage band from a small town. That sort of stuff happens. I teenage band interest and stuff like that. We grew up here. Fucking everybody had their own arguments and everything else. We'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> But I've only seen his ones. Dean actually played quite a big part in writing the set lists and stuff. Uh, Faith and Misery, as much as it was just covers that we played, we only ever had one no, song. That we not played. even Faith and Misery. Uh, I still date to this day, I'd say. I still date with you. I thought I saw. When I saw that, I'll go out. If I hear it, I'll send you it and say, sing that song. This will be in your season, your next set. Make this in your set list. I was actually going to lead into that for that, so I was like, <laughs> you, you had a big part in it because, like, if I wasn't yet band practice about nine times out of ten, I was running about with you, whether we were at skateboard or whether we were, at GP, whether we were fucking walking about the back roads, just fucking exploring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Music nine times out of ten was what we were talking about. If it wasn't a wrestling or right. the usual teenage shit, fucking it was, it was because I've learned that, last, do you think do you think it would work even, the band? Do you think it, do you think our voices would work together for these harmonies? Do you think I would be able to learn that solo? Do you think he would be able to learn that solo? Do you think he would mm-hmm. be able to it? I overthought right. so much when it came to that band. It was unreal. And I bounced every idea off that cunt. Uh, like just because I had that for some reason even though I've no got the mind for the, 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 the musical mind I can't I can't I've no got I'm quite tone deaf like I can't play an instrument I can't listen to a song and go that I can play that song but I can tell you if a song sounds good I can, I'm quite good at it may be because it's probably because I've grew up listening my dad with my dad I've grew up listening to everything my dad, my dad is one of the guys who had uh, orchestra, he had blues, he had jazz, he didn't know how much jazz, but he had a bit of, uh, more like he'd, he'd blues, he'd rock and roll, rock, he had a bit of pop, he had a bit of, my mum my mom had a bit of her rubbish pop. One that I was going to mention there was that there, we spoke about it a few episodes before was the New Year's parties. Why mean it would be Rockabilly Rebel, then it could be some speed metal band that my cubbins decided to put on. Then your dad, would, your dad would jump in and go right. I'm putting Janice Joplin. Get that pressure off. Aye. 
it would be like, right, Janis Joplin's been on, so right, Guns N' Roses is going on the new. And your dad, as much as he was life and soul at the party, getting minced, fucking drinking the youngins on the table, still up there being the DJ and changing every record well, we set. He wasn't being the DJ. He was getting us to be the DJ and telling us what to put on. Me and oh, Joanne day, for the that DJs. Day, that day. It, I, You'd be Mr. DJ the night. <laughs> CDs, aye, but your dad would have been the one picking out what was going on next, and it would be one song off a CD. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be put it on and listen to the full CD, it'd be right. No, I want right, to hear the great bit of that one song. Like, this mm-hmm. was Spotify before Spotify, folks, fucking in his living room. Because that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be a, a running joke from the own into it, fucking in his living room. <laughs> you point me sides. <laughs> It's like a rude jester. <laughs> it's, got, it's got to be so funny when we do one of these live episodes where the two of are sitting in the same room looking Aye. at the camera talking about it. But even then, we still do it and we're talking to him. <laughs> sitting with him, on the bus with him. <laughs> uh, but I was it was Spotify before Spotify doing it that way. Uh, but like I say, that's, got- how you, that's how you were, that's why I bounced the ideas off you. Like, Fucking what can you trying to remember what some of the old faith and misery set list? We played Bowling for Soup, we played Green Day, we played Kill Switch Engage, we played Bullet from a Valentine. Then we played some other stuff that was pure bubblegum pop, like Umbrella. Rihanna. That's because at that point, that was, when they... singer, it was a great idea, but at the end of the day, looking back on it, maybe it wasn't. He? At, that, at that point, that's because the big deal and that that used were a punk band punk pop punk band sorry then that's pop, what that album was uh, you, you so can see that sense, that. You that. Yeah. so you, you were then made a you were not in the Yana cover you were then maybe the I'll say August Bones Red but I can't remember it might be cute I think it was cute I think it was cute if I cover uh, yes cover sang that one I think uh, it's it's the umbrella so- cover I, I can actually tell you exactly who influenced their cover of Umbrella. Yeah. And it's, it's never, like, I get where you're, you're coming from because we did play a lot of punk style stuff that way. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a punk goes pop version that we played it for. It was McFly's version, believe it or not. Oh, Jesus. It come on one night, we were sitting on Mocklin drinking, and it goes Pink Strat was sitting in the corner and I packed up and started strumming along. He has just left because of this. I'm fucking left in this myself. It's not the same pokes anymore, it's the same poke. Fucking McFly. That's how pointy, didn't you? Mate, that's exactly what it was. It was on the McFly cover that I'm not even sure what they did at the cover of it for. But it was kind of up tempo. It was faster than what they usually played. It was a bit heavier than what they usually played today. So it stood out, man. Fucking, you said yourself, wait, like, before, why the fuck did I do a cover from that Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga film? Because it come on. Yeah, it's, it, it come on and it's in the good man. And I thought, here, I reckon I could play that. So wait, I played I'm it. saying that. I'm slagging you off for thinking that. If people to say tune to my, my channel, they will see my record collection and the final the final part may or may not feature a, a, an album that song is on. <laughs> we spoiler. But nah, that, that's a way where we have new We're we still talking about Umbrella. No. Yeah, you're probably looking for some. All right. Fair enough, for it. <laughs> Mate, I'm <laughs> totally confused the life at myself there. But, uh, uh, no, that was my soundtracks. It's, it's not mine. Full, full, full disclosure at this moment in time. Not mine. I've still not seen that movie. I don't want to see the movie. I don't care if it's the movie. I could play a part in that film. I just I don't fancy it. It doesn't look like my cup of tea. See, no gotta lie, it does give you a great insight to the life of the musician. I don't, I can't 
I could claim that that's been my experience with playing gigs and playing in a band and stuff, but I can believe that's what it would be like running between gigs and what would go in between gigs and the being famous and trying to fucking sustain a love life. Uh, Matt Wahlberg's The Rocker. Mm-hmm. Similar uh, almost, almost Famous. Mm-hmm. Motley Crue's The Dot. See, The Dot's no, made that, better that, films now. Biopic, though. The Dot is a biopic. The Star is Born is based off so, another film. So, so is Almost Famous. Almost Famous, a biopic. I saw me. Fucking... It's right, it's based off of the, oh. the, the writer, 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 You've got all these films behind you and you can't think of Still Crazy. Still Crazy? Still Crazy. Still Crazy? It's got Billy Conley in it. Billy Conley plays the roadie. Right, no, I've not got it. Uh, I've never heard it. Oh, I hear, man, that's fucking... You need to get that watched. Back to what we were talking about before we were so rudely interrupted when Dean realised he's not got a film that I've seen. Oh, hi. Uh, the things annoy me. Well, not, not as much as the time that Raymond came up to my house, trusted them to sleep on my couch, and then he told me a week later to which <laughs> I was not in the house at this moment in time that he took one DVD, or he took me a couple of DVDs from Casey's and switched them. But he didn't remember which ones had heart palpitations. Heart palpitations. But he done it. Because he's an asshole. Ah, well, mate, nah, if I remember rightly, did you know message me because you had noticed? No. I had no, no. Uh, you had noticed some. I had no, I, I'd noticed DVDs were switched. That's what it was. I'd noticed you switched DVDs. And I was like, ha, 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 you switched to DVDs. And then you told me you switched the case, took took the cases and switched the discs at the cases, and that gave me heart palpitations when I had to go through every single one of my discs, which was about a dozen at that point, to make sure everyone was perfect and in the right disc. For him to get through all that to find out that no, I had just I, I took up I, I took about twelve discs from alphabetical order and put them in the wrong place. You did the two discs. You moved. You swapped two discs and that was it. There was only two. Two had fun. Then you didn't like one disc and one disc. That was the case. I'm pretty sure. Did I not tell you that I had done them then? You did. You told me. You said you'd done a couple. But that (laughs) sounded, in my my, my over mind, that sounded like you'd done a couple. You'd done it to a couple of different movies. No, just you took one disc and one disc and switched them. (laughs) No, just you two DDs for the cases. You may be able to tell by the, the look behind me the fact that all my Blu-rays are sitting in alphabetical order, all my CDs are sitting in alphabetical order, all, uh, you can't see my VHSs, but they're all sitting in alphabetical order, all my games are sitting in alphabetical order, everything is in alphabetical order, I just like things to be right, and Raymond knew this, so don't trust something in your house, because they will mess up your collection. Hey. Says uh, this cunt says I've got too much spare time because I've been teaching myself garlic. I've taught myself how to do card tricks. I've taught myself how to do coin tricks. I fucking I can play songs on guitar before we finish playing on the fucking CD. But my CD collection fits in a drawer. My DVD collection fits in a drawer. The neither of them are in alphabetical fucking order. Now, see, if I had 50,000 DVDs sitting behind me, the last thing I would be doing is spending five years fucking fixing them. 
to spend five years fixing them. We want to take it a day. We want to take it a day at a time, usually. And that is the only over exaggeration you're picking up on there. I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, to be fair, like, every uh, state on... is an over exaggeration, but that's the only bit he caught on. Wait, they, they this did they take long because they were already sitting in Alfred or sitting in the ground, and that didn't take long, really. But they, they, they my DVDs, depend if when I buy a new one, it can take a wee, wee second, depending on. So if I buy a, like if I buy a letter which is A, if I buy a new movie, it starts with A. Obviously, it goes here. So then I need to move all the more like doing and all the way down this taking shelf. Uh, so it takes a wee bit of time. So it couldn't take a wee bit of time. That. That's why I wouldn't do that. But I have to. It just it's in and and it's something I made tell. I I just have to have it have to have it that way. It's yeah. no right. I actually realised when I was checking out your last vinyl collection video, I remember when your fucking collection was two stacks of CDs that didn't even fill the tower. Right, and then Jim... Half half a dozen ornaments. Like, your wee skulls and stuff. Mate, I I totally believe that. I wasn't even doubting it. They're all sitting in them. They're all in them. Yeah, with that, I'm I would actually have been pissed off if you said you didn't have them. But I, I, can, rec- I can recall when your collection was the two CD towers and then all your ornaments sat in top of it. There was a dragon, a couple of skulls. Uh, I don't have any dragons. I don't have any dragons anymore. I left them in the other world. I think I gave them to Doc, but I didn't like dragons. Here's a total random thing that I'm not sure if anybody else knew about this thing that he collected back in the day was fucking bottle caps. Do you still have your bottle cap collection? No, no, I don't even know what I did with them. I don't think I don't think they left now. Like at one point, Dean had a shoebox that probably had a bottle cap from every single party we were at, and it wasn't even a case of it wasn't a case of there was multi, it wasn't just a random bottle cap that he picked up either each time. He would always look for a bottle that he's never had, and a bottle cap that he didn't have. I like, there'd be something completely different. He, he would hate it if everybody showed up with cases of beer that night. Like, fuck right. that. Nah, where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Nah, where you? Where you? I've got Budweiser. I've got Budweiser. I drink Budweiser myself. I need a Budweiser. Yeah. Where you go? Oh, you've got fancy beer. He's a bottle lid. He's a bottle lid. That's a strange spirit. What country is that? Fake. He's a bottle cap. No, I think, I think, I think I've still got an Enigma bottle cap rod. Because I had an E, I marked an E in the inside of it, so we knew it was it. So I knew it was an Enigma bottle lid. And I was think I've still got it somewhere. Cap. Mm, cap, eh, no, Cap Morgan. Morgan Spice? That's what I was saying, man. I thought it was a Morgan's bottle we ended up pulling the last of the Enigmas into. No, right, Morgan I Spice bottle. I, I think that's in my dad's, but I think that's in my, my papa's toolbox. We have a few other things that be high school that I've kept by. Like, I've still got money for... I said you being fucking American. High school. But... Where about in here, sir, did you learn that word? I'm, I'm in Glasgow now. You don't understand the word I can't. I don't, I don't think fucking Ouija's use that word either. Aye, aye. Aye, they use high school. Yeah, that's what they're, they're using the word high school now. They're all weirdos. Oh. I've been Stop wanting too many guys. Aye. Right, so... Let's talk back to music. We'll not talk much about music this episode. So let's talk about favourites then. <laughs> we'll edit this episode down in about five minutes of the music. Uh, right. we, we, sorry, sorry, got, sorry. Hide the bus. Hide the bus. Hide the bus. Rewind yourself and fix what you just said, yes, sir. You'll edit this down and it'll only be about five minutes of music. That's what I said. <laughs> you said we. <laughs> Man, I thought I said ye. Alright, I alright. I had we. Ah, uh, you're that's the fucking weird Ouija fucking Dindonian fucking shit in you. <laughs> did you ever speak Doric in like, when you were up there? Or did what? you hear one of speak, did you ever hear one of the speaking Doric when you were up in Dundee? The fuck is Doric? It's like Ayrshire, it's like Scots, but with a broader accent in Ayrshire. What? 
It's it's an unof- it's one of the unofficial languages. Like I heard, talk- the, I heard the Donians talking like like the car runner put a circle. Right, that's just because the water's in the rings, right, mate. And they call what else is it? They call they call what so I'm trying to think of other words to use, but that's the only one I can remember because that was the most stupid. And they they announce it vowels. So like when they say cheeseburger, they don't just say cheeseburger, they say cheeseburger. Because they're weird. <laughs> no yeah, matter what, that's how they say cheese. It was quite funny because like when Dean was in Dundee, as much as we are best mates, I only went to Dundee twice. And that was the day I moved up there and went for the weekend about, what, six Just months ago? Uh, no, 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 you were up, you were up, you were up before lockdown, so it was the year before lockdown. Because remember, remember, lockdown happened, so you were only up in 2020, you were up in 2019. No, so I... It was a gig you were meant to be at, so you were up in 2019, mm-hmm. August of 2019, and then I moved away... You moved back down here no long after that. September. So nearly a year later. No, nearly a year. And it wasn't even to do wanting to do with the fact that I couldn't be fucked travelling. It was just only time like I would start thinking, right, it must be a bit my turn to get up there. And then I'd get the message of uh, I'm coming down this weekend. Oh well, I don't need to be up there. Right. I can I come down quite a lot because obviously if I can come down, I come down. That was the whole point. I wanted to be him. Mate, when you were on Dundee, it made more sense to come down for a couple of days at a time than just right. in Glasgow. It's easy enough to do. I'll just get in for the day. Even mm-hmm. if it is a case of like that, one of the last times you're on your way down, but you can come and do to fix the thing for your dad. That was just because you randomly had a day off and you message saying you're on your way down. But even if it was a case right. of be easy enough to organise fucking right I'm coming down to have a drink I'm not going to my dad's this weekend I've got your bit instead be easy enough to organise that day for, just for a random on the day hang. like it would have been easy enough to do that at the weekend and if somebody managed to get a chair swap at his work I wouldn't have had to drop 120 quid on a fucking vet bill I'll make him fucking feel guilty about that <laughs> I love how I'm getting the blame for your vet bill. I had to work. I can't get as far. It's such a choice well, that's no work. If you had asked for a shift swap, I wouldn't have taken my dog down the beach and she wouldn't have caught her fit. So therefore, I wouldn't have had to pay a fucking vet bill if you had got a shift swap. And if you gave me a valid reason for me to get a swift swap, the fact I said, oh, I have to get a swap because my, my sister-in-law is birthday. And she's coming up to see us because it's her birthday. I don't... Because you didn't tell me it was that. Yeah, I thought I did. So, so who's it playing? <laughs> Visit. Look at this. Airing out, airing out stuff in the podcast. Airing out, yeah. Airing out with arguments. If you think it means fault that my dog had to go to the vet. Mate, the dog is lying on that fucking bed, hanging her head in shame. She is off her edge at you at the moment. That dog is going to eat you. Bearing in mind, it is, a, it is in fact a staffy, but she's softer than shite. Aye. She doesn't even like, she doesn't come near me, so you've got any chance of that. Bill for her. Uh, well, you, mate, you'd be surprised if I can... Ken that way, she'll not speak to Ian if he comes to the door. She goes daft to Ian if he comes to the house. But see if she sees him outside. Best pal. Sees him in the street and she's pulling the arm out the fucking socket to get across the road to see him. <laughs> I reckon she, right, she could possibly be the same way with you. But back to what we were talking about. Right, let's day, get back to music because we've not spoken much about music. So let's talk about music. So, episode. Favourite music. Let's talk about favorite out favorite artist uh, ever. What's your favorite artist ever? Favorite artist ever. It's going to be a surprising one because it's no something you would expect. But yeah, uh, let me guess. Let me guess. Because we've not spoke up. We've actually not we've not spoke much about this before. Cameras. Let's let me guess. Favorite artist. 
I, I'm going to guess it's not going. I'm not going to guess a punk band because I'm going to guess it's not going to be a punk band. I think it's going to be some some weird rock band, right? Some <laughs> old old sixties, right. seventies rock band. Yes. I can't even think of it. It's not, it's, just, it's not the Beatles are kidding that much. Even though we spoke about the Beatles, you don't like the Beatles that much. No. No. I can I like think the Beatles, I can argue with the best of them about the Beatles because of eh, the amount of exposure I got to the Beatles when I was younger. But my favourite artist slash band of all time was Free. Because... See how you had says about Slash being your favourite guitar player. Paul Cosser for free was the one that made me want to play guitar. Paul Cosser, he was a he was a really wee guy. So for a start, a Les Paul looked fucking massive on him. But the first memory I've got of seeing Paul Cosser was playing the All Right Now guitar solo, and he was stood in front of the six foot Marshall stack. But he mm-hmm. stood like five foot five, like quite a wee guy. So the, the stack looked fucking massive to him, and he was up against it playing the solo, and the guitar looked massive, and that was what made me think, no, I want to do that. I never knew that. Were you, uh, mate? You must have heard. I must have mentioned that before. I've it's never ever a band I've heard to listen to though. Uh, mate, it's not even one that I've, like. I'll admit myself, I don't listen to them regular. I play all right now, like every few days, but that's kind of to warm my horns up when I'm playing the guitar anyway. Mm-hmm. It's one of the so sort of, one of the first songs I learned. I, I, I would say that's my influence, your biggest influence and your biggest, your favourite artist. Then I'd say your favourite artist would be somebody, like my, my oh, favourite really. artist, when somebody was listening to all the time. Somebody you'd always oh, well, back right, right. Yeah, I've, right. I've so, 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 yeah, I, you, you, aye. so, no, no, I get that. Like, yours is yeah, influence. So, mine, mine's, was, mine's is Slash, like, or mine's was Slash, but Slash is all, Guns Roses is also one of my favourite all times favourite bands. Aye. But, that, well, if, we're go- if we're going to be somebody we could listen to all the time, I'd have to say it would be like Bowling for Soup or something like that, because. That's one of the bands I know, like that fair does. I don't listen to them every single all the time, but if I'm stuck mm-hmm. for something to listen to, I can always just find one of their albums on name it or where it's free and end up singing along. Yeah, that, that's me. What I thought. That's that's me. What I thought. Then 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 free free was that when you said free, it went free. I don't know. I've ever heard room and listen to free ever. <laughs> no man, that's that's that was one of the big stories. That was one of the main. Influences that fucking made me like to learn. So it was. Uh, it was actually an argument made recently that I grew up wanting to be Paul Cossiff rather than Paul Rogers. <laughs> uh, and I dug my heels in with that one. But I it was that kind of stuff. But if, if it was going to be like artist, a band that they fucking shine down a bowling for soup or something like that. Because I could put them yeah, on. I'm a, I'm a fussy, fussy cunt when it comes to music. I, I can't pick one artist to say that's my favourite uh, artist. It's, it's loads of different artists for loads of different reasons, I suppose, isn't it? Aye. Uh, like, like I've, I've always went, I've always went Guns N' Roses for, for the same reason you said Free there. They were the first band that, that sort of influenced me into music, into loving music, so that's why I always pick them. And then there's always like Blue Smith Inn, because, well, we are, every band, every tap we are is Blue Smith Inn. Blue Smith Inn is a band that I've followed for that many years. It's a band I talk about so much. Yeah, I mean, well, there's also within T shirt one of these episodes. I know, it means he's just tucked away at the back. It's one of the rare ones I wear because it's white. Uh, th- then I would say there's Machine Head, Slipknot, and Pantera. So, like, I've got five. Like I can never mm-hmm. pick a favourite band, same as I can never pick a favourite album. Like my favorite, I've got two favourite albums, because in my opinion, they're flawed. And the Blackman, two, in my opinion, two albums that there's no one by one on it, and which 
in my opinion, makes a flawless album. Mm-hmm. What about you? What, what would you say? Your favorite albums wise? There's again, it's two or three different ones. Uh, one that's in regular fucking circulation, the new, as the Real Mackenzie's, the Shine Not Burn album. That it's a kind of collaboration. It's a live fucking gig. It's them all playing acoustic. And it's like a kind of greatest hit style album, but the fact that it's all done acoustic, some of their songs just sound different acoustic. I don't know why, but it's, it's one of the ones that's in the top circulation, of maybe six to know that if I'm struggling, if I don't want, can't even be bothered thinking of something to listen to, again, I can fire that album on. Fair dues, I might end up getting the full way through the album before I put on anything else on. I might get two songs into it and go, right, I've, I've thought of something else I want to listen to. Uh, a favourite album for growing up would probably be one of the Led Zeppelin albums but that's because it was like with Led Zeppelin each album was a different genre so it was, you'd, you'd get a blues album then you'd get a rock album then you'd get a pure psychedelic album then you'd get whatever album Stairway was on and then <laughs> But uh, mate, I, I actually the funny big, thing was big big Les Zeppelin fan there. I know I I yeah, I my dad's my dad's favorite band. I know everything about Led Zeppelin. Yeah, did, did you not notice also. that I, t- I, I timed it so that whatever album Stairway was on was the fourth example? I, I was making that a wee joke there. That's it's my, my go-to. That, I, I was making that a wee joke that the fans would maybe have got. Mm. Uh, my, 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 my go-to, my go-to is bang. favourite albums thing, man. I, I knew for a fact you were going to mention Appetite for Destruction because the amount of years you spent fucking asking me for that poster. Aye. That's what I've still got. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't have it up my walls. I don't have any really poster posters up my walls. It's 40 frames up my walls, obviously. Because I'm, I'm an hour grown up. You know, an adult, so it's like 40 frames off my wall. So I don't have actual posters on my wall. That's the only poster I've got up these days. I've got a few, but as I said, they're all 40 frames with actual, uh, uh, I've got a canvas. Mm, like, no, that's, that's framed. <coughs> but it's, it's, it's stuck away in a cupboard somewhere. Or I was afraid I didn't let you see it. I've still got the original. It's the original. It's the appetite with Destruction Cross. It's the one, at one point I'm going to go get the slash head tattooed on me. It's always been my plan. Uh, what, what about now? What, what, uh, what type of music have been listening to recently? But it's, yeah. Uh, recently, recently, it's, recently, it's Celtic punk. So it is. It's been. I've been listening to a lot of the Dropkick Murphys, uh, a lot of the Rumjacks. One of my favourite albums at the moment is their most recent one. Uh, I'm saying that it's one of my favourite albums. I can't even fucking think of the name of it at the moment. Uh, Hester. Uh, there's been two or three songs on that. I've actually covered one of their new songs on my channel which I think I'm the first one to do it. I'm not sure. You could correct me in this, everybody. But uh, it was one of these songs, the first time I actually, the day it came out, uh, I had it ready on YouTube. Hadn't I actually watched it when the premiere was on. So a few, few years after it, me and Laura were sitting watching it, and I happened to have a guitar in my hands. And this is something that, this is a habit of mine that Dean fucking has hated since we were at school. Because... With my ears, I can hear a song and figure out the chords with the guitar in my hand. I've done it. My my, my, my favorite my favorite one is still uh, "Know Your Enemy" by Green Day. No, fair, fair enough. The song is no hard. The song is like three three chords. Mm-hmm. But you listen to the first chorus, the first chorus, and then picked up your guitar and finished playing the song. Mm-hmm. Because obviously it's that easier song, and just the other well, it, it was the light in the shadow was the song by Rumjacks that came out recently, and me and Laura were sitting watching, listening to it for the first time. Together, I had the guitar in my hands. I was fucking about with the guitar. Else, come on, and I thought to myself, no, I recognise that. I recognise that progression. We started playing, and by just the look that she gave us, like, I knew that you could pick up songs quickly, but it's the first time I've ever seen you do it that quick because it was a song that was only released that day. There was no way I could have fucking right. 
I fair dues. I could maybe have played it that heard it before. I, I listened I listened to it a few times before on and figured it out and then decided that I'll play. Wasn't the case. We were written about that was the reason we didn't watch it when we get revealed. And that was in the first playthrough, mm-hmm. and on the second playthrough, I managed to figure out how to play the bagpipe pair on the guitar, which I waited a week. So I did before I put my cover up. There was nobody else that I had seen had done any covers yet, and I played the guitar pair and the bagpipe pair just because, well, I could. I hate you. I really do. So, some, sometimes I hate you. As, mate, things could come up that way, man. I reckon something that else that you probably hate is the fact that, see how I spoke at the beginning of this episode, I done a wee bit in Gaelic, then you pointed out it was in Gaelic, then I done a wee bit in Spanish. I've only actually been concentrating on learning Spanish for a few weeks. A month at the most. Gaelic, I've been concentrating on learning that for uh, since just before Laura fell pregnant with me, man. I, 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 that's, that's, I've been at Ravens back a few times recently, and every time I walk into this, that's fine. It's Gaelic punk. Mm-hmm. Punk music, but they're singing Gaelic. I can't stand punk music. It's no my, it's no my type of scene. It's never been, I've never liked punk. I like a wee bit of pop punk, but I don't like full blown punk. I've never been a fan of it. I don't think it's, I, I don't see the, I don't see the talent in it. Don't see. I just see it as people hitting instruments because that's what punk became. That's what real punk is. It did. You were meant to make of talent and real punk. It was mm-hmm. meant to just be a random person back up an instrument and let's, let's play music to play music. And I don't <laughs> like that. I just I can't. I, I've never been a fan of it. And when it went in the the big mainstream punk bands like your Sex Pistols and stuff like that, they're no. They sing all about this common man and we're the common man, and but they're no. They're, they're rich people from London who wanted to rebel against their parents. They had right. paid, they, they, their their mum and dad paid, gave them their instruments and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I've never been, I've, I've always had that view. I, I, it's probably because my dad's the same. My dad's never been a big, big punk fan and he had the same sort of thoughts and the first and stuff like that. So that's why I've never been, I've never really listened to that sort of stuff. My punk influence came from my mom and my uncle. Like, my uncle that I'm going to mention here, was that big that big a uh, punk and come knock that when he passed Boy. away when they when he Joke. passed away he still the last rebellion festival they had they had a big flag dedicated to him at the punks that uh, that were lost this was in Blackpool at a festival about a guy in come but that was a case of everybody knew joke everybody Boy. in the club knew joke uh, actually the last gig I played with the last band I was in. There's footage there that you can actually hear somebody talking about big joke for Cumnock. And the guy is at the other side. Like the, the person filming is on one side of the stage and the guy that is saying this is at the other side of the stage. And I'm on the stage thinking, that's my uncle he's talking about. We're in Glasgow. That, this is a random guy that I've never met that's talking about my uncle. I fucking love this. Where is he? I need to buy him a drink. <laughs> just because that's what joke was. Joke was just the funker. And uh, he was one of the big guys, and that was joke was one of my dad's pals. But my dad mm-hmm. was never into that sort of scene. My dad always said that he's all these guys, he had pals, all these guys who are into this punk. But my dad was still a rockabilly. Mm-hmm. He kept his rock and roll. He was into mm-hmm. he preferred the fifties, and that's probably where I, that's probably where I've stayed. I've stayed. I've stayed that way. But for me, it's me. I prefer my my metal, which I can I can I kind of say much. Be slagging it. Be saying I don't like punk. When I, I'm sitting here and I, I listen to stuff like Can Effect, Dolph the Cowboy, and uh, I, I can't think of any other big bands that I listen to that way, but I listen to a lot of like Scream Death Metal, especially recently I've been listening to a lot of Scream, Scream Death Metal. It's stuff, stuff that just is pure noise because Hi. that's what I like. I like noise. I like, I like to have Dolph the Cowboy on the day, for the neighbors. I had that little flavor last uh, the, 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 the Doom album because it's the best album ever. If you stay tuned to my yeah. and I plug if you stay tuned to my records, you'll see that at some point too. See, this is a total like sidestep here, but when you're saying sorry, neighbours, man, but Ken, it's actually surprising that I've still to have a noise complaint since I've been in this house and I play music every single day. I haven't made a noise complaint this one yet. I'd won in Dundee, but that's because the boy was a total bell end. I'd uh, 
I had a bad neighbour in Dundee. Uh, I stayed in the top flat, as we spoke about before. And the guy down the stairs for me just to bang the ceiling quite a lot. And one day I had... So normally, as I can tell, I, as I say, I listen to metal, so I'm not a metal playing, but one day I decided to put on a CD that is called Soul Sister and Blue, by Blue Brothers and Soul Sisters. It's, it's basically blues and that sort of stuff. And I, uh, one of the songs, the song that was playing was Aretha Franklin's RSP. I, 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 I just like to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't even think it. You fucked up this made me talk up today. <laughs> Uh, I was around to respond and uh, respect. So not a heavy song in any way. And my record player, the CD player was sitting at 20. 22, sorry, it was sitting at And my neighbour taps the door. And I'm in my, I'm in my kitchen, which is like the furthest room away from my, 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 living, my living room. And I can barely hear my music. And he tapped my door. And I tell him to fuck off. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm listening to Aretha Franklin at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. And it's a 22, not a pal. But you guys only know he's complaining. I've ever heard. He just did near North Stone. You should have said, is it because I is black? And then you would, he would have I, just not care what they say. I, 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 I told him I can play worse than that. I, if you want, I can go put on heavier stuff and you can complain then. But you can't complain because I'm listening to a piece of fun. No, thank you. So I think that's us really off. Well, I haven't spoken what I'm listening to the new. Realised that last year, have we spoken about the stuff you've been listening to, man? We fucking we spoke about the rum jacks, then can you segue it again? I'm trying to think what I'm listening to now. I'm listening to a new band, a band, well, I'm listening to a new band, a band that's been a book by a, a fun on YouTube, one of the YouTube deep holes you find. Uh, Sumo Psycho, they're called. A uh, random woman fronted band. Uh, uh, I, I, quite, I quite like my rock bands with a woman in it. If I find a band where a woman sing it, sing it, I click on it and see what it's like. And I clicked in them and they're quite, it's like Skindred, but we're a woman singer. Which is funny because one of the songs actually has Bendy the singer for Skindred, don't it? But that, 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 that's really that. That is actually sounds quite interesting. Really. Uh, you need to send me a link to that because that sounds quite intriguing. We might even, I was, I've been thinking every day now, they're in the reactions folder. So mm-hmm. I was going to do it. We were going to do the reactions there at one point. So I can get into the reactions, mate. I'll get you there that, that way. We could show that. Out. Either from something. As I say, that's something we've been thinking about then. Hey, we said that at the beginning of this video is doing some some sort of reaction videos. I can figure out how to do it properly. So I I think that's all we can talk about in this episode. That's that seems mm-hmm. to wrap up the music. As I say, we'll speak about concerts in a later date, we'll speak about that in another episode. But I would say that's all we need to speak about. Mm-hmm. Right, so is there anything uh, you tune in for uh, If you want to find any of us, you can find us on any social media. Uh, you can look up the Stain Folks on YouTube and uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can find Raymond at the Tricks and Tunes. Is it Tricks and Tunes? Uh, yeah, so and Tunes is now on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, it's not on Facebook yet. It's on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah. I haven't done anything really in the last few weeks because the dog's had a wee injury, so I've been focusing there on her than shooting anything, to be fair. She had a, a wee mishap at the beach where she ended up having to get fucking staples and bandages and stuff in her paw, so she's getting the best of treatment at the moment. But hopefully we get our staples out the more and I'll be able to get back to making random content again. Good. I've been posting some things up my channel. I'm editing like crazy than now. I have two series going on my channel. Well, three including this, but I've got three, uh, two series going on my channel at the moment where I'm going through collections. Uh, I'm going through my DVD and Blu-ray collection and I'm also going through my record collection. So you can check them out if you want. They're in this channel, part one and two of the record collection. I think three parts of my DVDs are up. I'm doing the fourth, I'm editing the fourth part of the new. And, oh man, these edits are going to kill me. They're so long. It takes so long to edit. I've been editing this part, part five, part four for like three weeks now. You see, <laughs> I, I feel your pain on that respect, mate. I've only been actually kind of learning how to edit in the last few weeks and it's a pain in the ass dealing with it on the phone. No way. 
Oh, yeah, because everyone, everyone on the phone screen, man, trying to figure out where everything is, then trying to remember it. Then you take a couple of days away from it and you got a breakfast. And you go, how did I do everything that I did the other day? I can't remember that. I need to teach myself how to do this again. I see, I'm quite good that way where I don't need to do that because I'm quite good at editing because I've done it. Cause I've read it in so many, so many different ed softwares nowadays because that's what I've done. That's what I've studied at college, obviously, so I can kind of yeah, do that sort it's, of it's stupid stuff. It's the adapting for audio to video, uh, visual that's getting me like I, in my head, I can understand what I'm trying to do. Right. But it's trying to get the video to do the same thing. It keeps confusing me. So it is, it's, right, right. I can't I can try to crop this, but how do you, where am I trying to crop it to? If it's, if it's a sound wave, it's easier to find places on a sound wave than it is in a fucking video. And my right. opinion, anyway, right. don't, don't show that, don't show that. That's right. nice to Nick, 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 Answer the questions we've asked in this video. Answer, tell us your favourites and stuff like that. Let us know your thoughts. Let keep even if you've made it this far in this video, that means you've watched all of our, all of this podcast. That means you quite clearly enjoyed what you've seen here. So if, if you have liked what you've seen this far in the video, I want you to send us your most vulgar, stupidest joke in the comment section. Yes, that. And I want them to put in an idea for our next episode in the comments. Either, if made it this far, they're a fan of this episode. They're always a fan. To talk about an episode. Fucking... Right, keep, keep we'll something, keep, fucking keep wrestling something. event for an episode. Yep. Give any, any, any idea. Give any idea you want. If you want, whatever you want to hear, us two idiots, uh, one, of, one of these two idiots talking about on this Dane Fox podcast, let us know. Tell us and we'll talk about it because that's what we're here Dempster, for. Dempster, if you are watching, tell us what you want to come on and talk about. Hi. <laughs> right, I'll catch you all later. Thanks for tuning in and that's it. Bye. Top of the first one, Kovacaharic.